Well, I made a trip to the local stores, got me a refrigerator freezer. That's where that's gonna go. The water tank will go back up underneath here. So I have to pull that refrigerator out of the way to get in it. This is where our cooktop is gonna go. That's where our microwave is gonna go. And that's where our sink is gonna go. Our sink is nothing but a bowl I just bought from Walmart, it's 10 bucks. Our, a real sink was like $90. And this will be just fine. I've gotta cut a hole in the top for it and then I drill a hole in the bottom for the drain and it'll work just fine. And so this is the layout. Talk to the wife, cause she's gonna use this most, more than I am. And we talked about where everything's gonna go and got the layout for the kitchen. I'm also working on putting a tilt up shelf probably right here, maybe a work surface right here. So you can see I traced my bowl out and I moved in about a quarter inch to a half an inch to allow for some lip. And we've got my drill and my sawzall or my saber saw and we're gonna cut it all out. Got the hole roughed out, got the hole it's the right size. Again, I've got to do some painting and all that and finishing. I'm not gonna install it permanently right now. I'm just wanting to know exactly where everything's gonna be. So now we need to get a hole saw and drill a hole for the drain in the bottom of the, the uh, sink. I've got a nice drain right here. Well, we went through a period of a few days of cold weather and so finally got it warm enough where I can get out here and lay underneath the trailer to try to mount the black tank on the bottom of the trailer. If I would have really done this, I would have done the black tank first and then done the electric and all the other construction later. The plumbing probably should be the first. So what I've got here is a 33 gallon black water tank or gray water tank, either one. And I'm trying to figure out where to put it. I need it as close to the front of the trailer where the V-nose is, as I can get. Well, it's not wide enough. I mean, it's too wide to fit here, unless I want to put it at the bottom of the channel, the above the, below this, hang it below. That would be two or three inches below the floor. I really wanted it up against the floor because it hangs down from the floor eight inches and all this valve stuff is going to get knocked off if it hangs too low so i really wanted it tucked up as tight as i could but accessible so i started uh trying to fit it up in here well let's zoom back a little bit i've got this tongue part of the tongue right here hanging down it's about three inches well if i have it up against the floor then this puts this valve up against the floor or closer to the floor and so what i've had to do in order to be able to attach the drain hose to the quick connect is i'm going to have to have it hanging down or spaced about an inch from the floor and so what i'm going to do is put a piece of plywood across here to mount it and then I'll figure out the rest of the mounting on the angle iron and that's the way that this tank is going to have to sit in order for this valve not to be interfering with this channel the part of the tongue right there and so these are some of the compromises that you come up with whenever you're building a trailer or building anything like this the white here is just duct tape I've got to get a coupling and connect these two here and so I'm gonna get the coupling and then we're gonna start the process of mounting this up underneath the trailer here you can see I put in a water filler door hatch with our water filler here this is I guess what they call a dish or whatever you can put your garden hose in here and fill the water tank through here this other one also, there's a, a vent hole here to vent your tank. This other one is for attaching a garden hose and pressure filling a tank. My tank doesn't like that. And so I don't, if I was running straight off the water at a RV park, I could do that if I plumbed it in right, but it couldn't go to, to my tank. I like this because it uh, locks up for security. 
A lot of guys aren't going to show you this stuff. I'm going to lay it all out there for you. If you've looked at my previous videos, you'll see that I have taken out a bunch of the cabinets and the uh, pantry and the refrigerator cabinet and all this. The reason is, uh, you know, I've built a lot of racing cars and I've built a lot of hot rods and I've built a lot of uh, off-road trucks and things like that. I've not ever built a house on wheels. And so I get gung-ho on one system and to the detriment of another system. You got your electrical system, you got your plumbing systems, you got your bed, you got your storage, you got, uh, the, I've got two different electrical systems, a 12 volt and a 110 volt. There's a lot here to consider. And uh, the, after getting this far into it, my recommendation would be to, to get all your tanks and your drain holes and everything else laid out the very first thing. After you got insulation and after you got your interior walls in, then you start worrying about where your tanks are going to be and where your drains are going to be. My tank, my drain tank, which is outside and underneath the, is already mounted. Uh, the drains wound up having to be further back from the nose than I really wanted. I wanted them up in the nose area, but the tank, because of the cross members of the trailer, had to be further back. And so my drains wound up right under my refrigerator. Okay, well, that meant we're going to have to raise the refrigerator up about four inches for the drains. That's fine. We can do that. Well, that interferes with this, the outlet box and the filler tube for the tank. And then I was going to put this tank over here on this side. Well, then you come, you couple this 250 pounds on this side with the 250 pounds of batteries on this side, and the the driver's side of the trailer winds up weighing 500 pounds more than the passenger side tra of the trailer. Uh, when you consider that this whole trailer decked out should weigh about 2,000 pounds, that's a fourth of the body weight on the left side, and that's not an even distribution of weight. So I wound up moving the, the tank to the other side. Well, that interfered with where we had the toilet. And then that interfered with something else. Also, the height of the tank interfered with the shelf that I had here. So I needed to raise the shelf up an inch and a half, two inches. So it was just one problem after another to compromise. All of it is a compromise, but it was a compromise, 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 compromise. And then I wound up putting the pump right here where it wasn't going to be there and that's where the cabinets were so i just pulled it all out i've got the tank where i want it these straps are nowhere near this is just plumber's tape they're nowhere near strong enough to hold this thing full this is 21 gallons i think it's 21 gallons at eight pounds a gallon you know you're 160 to 200 pounds here of sloshing water and so it's going to take a lot more uh strap and a lot more uh, hold down than that and so I've got to fabricate all of that once we get the tank in place and I know where it's locked in and everything's good then we'll start building this shelf back building the refrigerator storage back and building the pantry back you just can't as excited as you get and I and I get excited on finishing things I get excited on starting a phase of the project and finishing I get very myopic. I want to finish the shelves. I want to finish the storage. I want to finish the solar. I want, and I'm very, uh, that's, that's my way of thinking. On a project like this, you have to think lots larger, lots bigger. And my first step, my first recommendation and my first step after you've got it insulated and you've got all the wallboard in is to figure out where all your plumbing is going to go. Your plumbing has got a lot less flexibility than your electrical does. Your electrical's got a lot more flexibility on location and where you want to run wires and how you want to run it. Plumbing is a lot uh, larger and takes up a lot more space and requires a lot more planning in advance. So I lay it all out here, warts and all, and you know, learn from it. The next step, like I said, is to get this tank anchored down and get that filler neck in there adjusted right and get the vent tube run back up over to here get that whole intake system set up i know that the uh, we tested the pump the pump works the drains work we got to get the drain from the sink over and to the drain holes 
and I've got the second hole there to vent the tank so that the drain will, the water will go down into the tank. 